what you know about the warp band, son? That was a question that was asked of me, so let's go ahead and get started. So let's start off by asking, what the heck are the warp bands? In 1979, there was a meeting of the World Administrative Radio Conference. Now, this conference these days is called the World Radio Conference. Anyhow, this conference consists of International Telecommunications Union members. uh, That is known as ITU. And the reason they met was to amend worldwide radio regulations. Now, there's multiple ITU regions, 1, 2, and 3. Here in North America, we are members of ITU Region 2. Part of this meeting was approving the allocation for radio amateurs on the 30, 17, and 12 meter bands. Each segment of the ITU would define use for their particular region. So what that means is is that ITU Region 2 might have different roles for these bands than ITU Region 1 and 3. These bands became known as the work bands. So taking a look at this document that I got from the American Radio Relay League, thanks to the ARRL for providing this, you can see frequency allocations on various bands. Uh, There is a key or a legend, as I typically call them, over on the right-hand side so you can understand what the colors are for. But if you take a look in the center here, we have one for 30 meters, and this is one of the work bands. The first thing it says is avoid interference to fix services outside the U.S., and that's probably good amateur practice. If you take a look at this band, it's actually quite small. On the low side, we are at 10.1 megahertz. On the high side, we are at 10.15 megahertz. So that would mean that this band is only 50 kilohertz wide. Now on this band, there's some regulations. 200 watts peak envelope power. Peak envelope power is measured at the radio output. So let's say you're transmitting at 100 watts on your radio, and then you have a, I don't know, let's say you have a 3 dB gain on your antenna, that's a doubling of your power. So that would mean that your effective radiated power is 400 watts. But because this is based off of PEP, you're fine. Now if you take a look at that bar, here it is red. And that means it's RTTY, or RIDI and DATA. You can also do CW anywhere on this band, but like all bands, generally folks would do CW at the lower end of the band. Now if we scroll down, and we can't scroll because this is a slide, and you look at 17 meters, 18 megahertz, you would see that the band on the low end starts at 18.068, and it goes all the way up to 18.168, meaning that this is 100 kilohertz wide. And it's divided into two segments. The red is for RIDI and data. And also CW is typically done here. CW can be done anywhere. And then you can do phone and image transmissions. Phone is talking on things like single sideband or AM modulation. I don't think there's very much AM on 17 meters, but I could be wrong. Uh, You could also do things like transmit uh, slow scan television on that uh, set of frequencies. And then if we come down here, we look at 12 meters. Uh, this is 24 megahertz, and that starts at 24.890 megahertz and goes up to 24.990. So again, 100 kilohertz. And these are really small bands, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. And this one is also divided segment-wise, like the 17-meter band. So we're not going to go into all of that again. But what I wanted to talk about, because these bands are small, There is a gentleman's agreement that contesting will be not done on these bands. So many of the contests that uh, you see amateur radio uh, operators participate in will have specific rules about contacts or points on these bands do not count. There's a little bit of drama here. So things like soda and poda generally are frowned upon on these bands. Now, despite having every single attribute of a contest and meeting the criteria for what a contest is, Soda and Poda are not considered contests, and they say that these aren't contests, so we're allowed to do them on those bands. I don't know if that's good practice or not, and we'll let that be a debate for another video. I don't want to get into it here. But what I will say is is that if we don't use bands, and these bands in particular, we run the risk of losing access to these bands. And I sure would rather see folks doing Soda and Poda on these bands than lose them. So maybe people need to be not so uptight about this. Anyhow, I hope this answers the question about what work bands are, why we have them, and how to use them. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond.